testimony of a former witch doctor and magicians of Nigeria, Emmanuel. In this conversation Lucifer explains why he rebelled against his creator. He also spoke about the birth of Adam and the identity of our Lord Jesus Christ. What we are discussing today is titled My Conversation with Satan. Many of people will start to wonder how is it possible for someone to have a face-to-face -face conversation with Satan. I mean different questions can be raised. Some will ask themselves what does the devil look like? Is he green or yellow? Is he black or white? Is he red-skinned? Is he an animal or a human? And well my friends, I do not think that this is relevant, what is more important is his goal, and what does it have to do with you, in fact his goal is the destruction of your soul, that's it, he wants to destroy you, so I thank God for giving me the opportunity to go through all these experiences that I lived in order to be able to expose Satan, so that no human being after hearing my experience will ever fall into Satan's trap again, unless they voluntarily want it. The conversation that I had with Satan happened in a summit of the diabolical government of Lucifer, that was held in the former western region of Nigeria in 1952 towards the end, I was very young, a little boy like, but I had been initiated to these diabolical things, and I was not able to get out of it, even if I wanted to, when the unclean spirits hold this kind of convention, different division and department of the dark world attend, each of these division and department have a leader, for a summit or convention that will gather all the department and division of the satanic world under a tent, Lucifer the son of the dawn is the one who preside over such an occasion, in this satan meeting that was held in Nigeria the captain Lucifer was the session leader, in this gathering fallen angels such as Belzebub, Asmodeus, Erethin, Bobma, Summerline and Majin stood around Lucifer as security guards, they were really like an army. When the meeting began Satan greeted us in a cult language, and we responded accordingly, immediately Satan asked us, what do you think we can do against God's children who give themselves to prayer and purity, immediately Beelzebub rose to say something, but was interrupted by a man among us, who asked the devil, are you talking about the people who call the name of Jesus? To this question, Satan angrily and painfully replied to this man and asked him, why did you shoot me with arrows, the devil said, if you venture to mention that name again, I will treat you ruthlessly, then the assistants were all advised to never mention the name of Jesus again but to call him the H.S. man, and not to mention his name, my beloved brethren. Indeed a very frightful thing happened on that day when that man mentioned the name of Jesus Christ, in fact, as soon as the man mentioned the name of Jesus there was a very bright light in the mist of darkness in which the meeting was taking place, the light was so great that the meeting could not continue, this is the reason why witches and wizards hate all Christians, especially those who pray regularly, on the other hand, the way this meeting ended so abruptly, raised so many questions in my mind regarding the invincibility of Satan's power, because I used to believe that Satan had the power and the authority. This incident raised curiosity in me, then I decided to know the name of the man who is called Jesus, for that, I also decided to invoke Satan in order to know the truth from him by listening to the mouth of the cursed one, I wanted to know why he did not like hearing the name of Jesus, I made all the preparations necessary that must be done before Satan can be invoked, if someone wants to see Satan face to face, as far as I know, in magical such a person must need a lot of dedication, a lot of preparation, a lot for determination, such a person must fast for at least 11 months and 11 consecutive days, taking his food once a day, but, there are still taboos to do and not to do during the 11 months and 11 days, during this period of fasting you must not sleep, nor bow your head, do not sleep, nor be out of his applet in the afternoon. You must not be involved in sexual contact too, to the end of the fast, then the invocation can take place in a specially prepared area, you have to focus on a particular place, this is where any ritual and all kinds of necessary ceremony must take place, and so I did all that was necessary to invoke Satan, and I began to summon the devil, as soon as I began to invoke him he appeared. To start I asked Satan to answer frankly my questions, then he called me in my spiritual name and told me, please, leave this topic aside, because I know what you intend to ask. Despite everything, I told him, I did not even ask you a question, 
yet you seem unwilling to even listen to my concern, you do not want to listen to me? He replied, you can talk now, be love, what you are listening is the dialogue without follow up between me and Satan that happened on that day, I asked Satan a question, I said Captain, why on that day do you remember that you passed an instruction according to which no one should mention the name of Jesus? The moment I have to mention the name of Jesus, the devil yelled as if he was hit by something painful, immediately he asked me, you said you wanted to talk to me but why did you shoot me with an arrow? I said, Captain, did you see me with a bow and an arrow? The devil tells me with a very cold voice but angry, he tells me there are no arrows in your hand, but there is an arrow in the name you just mentioned, yet I told you not to call that name but call him righteous man you will call him the righteous man, I answered the devil, why should I not call the name of Jesus in your presence, immediately the devil began to groan with pain then he screamed as if he was bruised and he disappeared, I could not see him anymore, then I started to do a kind of powerful invocation to force him to reappear, immediately he reappeared, but this time he was annoyed and his face was so wild, as if he wanted to consume me if he had the power to do it but I had so many things around me that did not allow him to get closer, however, we resumed our conversation, and then I asked him another question, why have you disappeared when I called that man's name right, then the devil spoke and I was shaken, he said, you dare to disturb me by mentioning the name of that righteous man, you know, in the beginning, we were created in the form and resemblance of God, he made us from stones and rock, we were made of sulphur, by creating the world God made human beings from mud, do you know that the stone is of a better quality than the mud, yet God said that man should reign over everything he had created, including me and my angels, you must understand that when you say to clay and mud to rule over rock and stones you are moving towards obstacles, the devil says, I was disturbed and angry when the Lord told men to dominate and submit me and my angels, so we decided to convene our own meeting to counter God's plan. The members of the supreme council of our government that includes Lucifer, Leviathan, Satan, others such as Belial, Belzebub, Astaroth, Magat, Asmodeus, Orient, Paimon, Hamaiman, Arenton, Casiel, Sachel, Gabriel, Chanel, Michael and Raphael, our subject of deliberation was what we must do for God to reject man, the devil asked the member of his government about what must be done for God to reject man, after Lucifer have asked this question, there was a silence of about five minutes, then Beelzebub, the centurion of the hypocrites stood up and said, the way that we can follow is that we must get man to sin against God, we know that God hates sin, and so if God sees sin in man he will reject him and thus man will become an enemy of God like us, this suggestion was unanimously agreed, but Henriton asked a question, how are we going to do that, how can we succeed in getting man to become enemies of God, Lucifer answered, I will use the skin of Leviathan, it is the skin of snake, given that snake is a friend of Adam, so if I use the skin of the snake he will identify me, and I will give them the fruit of the spiritual poison which is the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which God has commanded them not to eat, I will make them eat, so man will also become a rebel like us, they will become sinner, and God will heighten his anger against them, evil spirits were very happy when they heard the plan for the destruction of man, and when Lucifer has successfully executed the plan we were all very happy, and so almighty God chased man out of the garden of Eden, now my dear brothers and sisters, according to Satan's story I have observed a number of things, we read it in the Isaiah book concerning the Leviathan, who was a serpent snake, you know there is something very significant here that I want us to learn from this experience, Satan and all the devil's forces realize that the easiest way to catch a person is through his friend, through someone they love, this is the best way and Satan will now come subtly and skillfully to put some kind of bondage on any individual, but the Bible tells us in Psalm 52 the fool says in his heart there is no God, in fact when Satan plotted the down all f men, he did not realize that God would have an alternative plan if the first one failed, actually God already had a plan of redemption when the devil went against Adam, so I encourage you Christians as you listen be very watchful and extremely careful, listen, you can never be too careful with Satan, and in order to be careful enough, 
you must live a life of holiness, a holy life, and what to do to live a holy life, there is nothing called holiness without obedience to the word of God, that's why I have this message in one of my tapes, obedience is the essence of holiness, I repeat, obedience is the essence of holiness, so if you want to be holy you must obey God, to continue my conversation with Satan, I asked another question to the devil, I said, Captain, why is it only sin that you can use for human destruction, Satan responded by saying, it's simple, here's the reason, in the past we have lived with the almighty God in the celestial region and we know what he hates and what he loves, we tested the joy of his kingdom in the past, and since he chased us away we would not want that someone inherits what we lost, listen, once we pushed the man to rebel against God, the almighty did what we never expected at all, he prophesied about the ultimate destruction of our government when he said, I would put enmities between you and the woman between her posterity and your posterity, this one will crush your head and you will hurt her heel, this is in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, after this prophecy we were all sad because we knew what it mean, however, Lucifer called for calm, and said, what kind of son do you think the woman will engender who will be able to conquer us? Do not be afraid, do not shudder, if a son of man has to go against us, once he's dead everything will be over, so none of you should be afraid at all, but we did not know that the posterity of the woman would be mysterious, I had to ask another question to Satan, how many sons of God did the man promise, and what was the sign that you hoped to see to know that your kingdom was in danger, Satan replied, the seed of the woman whom God has promised is the one who was to confront our government and destroy it according to God's prediction, then I have another question for Satan, what kind of war have you made against the seed of the woman, did you fight with rifles or with bullets, Satan answered, the war was not that of pistols, bombs or knives, but it was a blood war, God wanted the blood from the just purifies the sinner, you know brother, I want us to understand a little here when God calls you, God calls you to come to him exactly as you are, nothing more than you are, and when you come to God as you are, God wants you to give him everything you are and all you have, but Satan say no, the devil always tell men, I do not even ask you to give me everything, just a fraction of your life, and when you give him that fraction of your life, whether it's your mouth to gossip and destroy people character and reputation, beloved, when you give Satan your eyes for lust, and when you give your ears to hear defamation because you have ears that itches you, and you call yourself believers, you know when you give this little part of your life to Satan, one thing is sure, as soon as you give him that little part, God will reject the rest of what you have given him that you think is good, because you are not yet complete, do not forget complete submission, Hebrew 20 verse 22 may be able to teach you a little lesson, therefore, if God was able to find a man who would live a holy life and die without blemish, if anyone could believe in him he would be forgiven, such person will be released from our power, and after saving all mankind with his blood our government will collapse, then I asked another question to the devil, what is the name of this particular son that God said is going to break the head of your government, and how did the son come into this world, who told you that he is the promised son, Satan answered, that's the name you have been saying since we started the discussion, and I told you to call him the righteous man, I replied subconsciously I never knew when I said that but I replied inwardly, is this Jesus, and when I mentioned Jesus in my heart, Satan howled as if he was bruised, he threatened to leave me if I quoted the name of Jesus again, because it was more painful than an arrow for him and more intense than fire, he tells me never to mention that name again, and then I replied, Captain, because of the way you speak I'm sorry but I would like to know, this writer's man you speak of seems to be more than you, you did not say anything about him, I just want to know something, what's going on? How is it that you do not want to hear his name anything about him, why his name is so dangerous, Satan replied, I would have said more but you are the one who asks many questions, I said okay, forget all these questions, tell me a little about that righteous man, then Satan entered into this kind of long story that I will try to familiarize you as much as possible, a lot of time has passed now, but I still remember very well as if it were yesterday, Satan told me, you want to hear the truth, 
Now to God who is the supreme glory I swear in the name of the living God I will not hide. Well, before the promised child was born, there were many prophecies about his birth even before his birth, yet Almighty God hid the mystery from human beings. The mystery is that the Almighty God himself came to this world to redeem human souls who died in their offenses. He came because of the sin of man and that he may suffer death on the cross, so that the power of sin would be destroyed forever because many people just have come into this world to do these things but they had our property in their lives, so no human being could do it but God himself, hence the name of that righteous man that I told you not to mention is the very name of the God that he bears, it is for this very reason that no one among us can bear this name, because the universe was made by that name, the most important aspect in all of this is that he is dead and risen from the dead on the third day and ascended to heaven with the flesh which no one has ever done in this world, we have made great efforts to break his heels, I mean to cause him to sin, so that heaven and earth will be corrupt, but he was persistent and rather broke our head, he insisted on justice, so instead of breaking one of his heels he bruised our head, even though we have labeled charges against him by which we wanted to trap him, the first accusation we quoted him was a bible verse that says, even if the hands are joined the sinner will not be released from his punishment, Proverb 11 for 21 but this man just answered that whoever will come to me I would never put him out, John chapter 6 verse 37, that's why this just man has been tempted on the cross through two thieves, that were nailed with him, one in his right hand and the other to his left hand, for I Satan had personally entered the thief's heart on the left side and then the one the right side in order to tempt this right man, my goal was to see if we could cause this virtuous man to act contrary to the word of God or his own word, I started the conversation through the thief on the left, speaking through his mouth I said, if you are the son of God save yourself and us too, but he did not say anything, immediately, I entered the thief on the right side and I said, you're not afraid of God since you have the same sentencing like us, we receive precisely the reward of our act, but this man did no harm, then, I added, remember me when you enter your father's kingdom, after saying that, I quickly moved away from the thief's heart and I stood beside to hear the answer of this just man, to my astonishment, he bruised my head by his response to this thief, although he knew that I was talking through this thief to tempt him, but he spoke directly to the thief but not me, Jesus said to this man, today you will be with me in paradise. Satan said it was the most painful day for the kingdom of darkness, according to what Satan told me that day was sad. There never was such a day in the history of the forces of evil, after this thing happened, this man just gave up his soul, as a result our government split up, that's what Satan said, he said that their government split up and was scattered to the four corners of the earth, until the body of this just man were removed from the cross and buried, the devil said, since I was not able to control the damage, this man just did not go to the bottomless pit because of the living humans but he went to hell for the dead to have the privilege of hearing the gospel, that corresponds to 1 Peter 3 verse 18 to 20, Christ also once suffered for sins, he just for the unjust, in order to bring us to God, having been put to death as to the flesh, but having been made alive concerning the spirit, in which also he went to preach to the spirits in prison who had once been unbelieving when the patience of God was prolonged in the days of Noah, then Satan to continue to say it, immediately after Jesus entered the grave, I and my disciples the angels remembered a word that Jesus pronounced before his death, when he said, destroy this temple and I will raise it in three days, Satan and his colleagues now reason as the word of God says that there is no work, no thought, no science and no wisdom in the abode of the dead where you go, so after the burial of this righteous man, the evil spirits stood around his grave, they decided not to allow him to be resurrected from the dead, even if he wanted to get out of the grave they decided to beat him mercilessly since he was still in the body of the flesh, so they decided to hit him mercilessly in case he came back to life, for this purpose they blocked the wind from all over the world that it should not blow, they thought he may use the wind to come out of the grave, but to their surprise, when it was 23 past 55 on Saturday night, they saw the angels of God coming down from the sky, they sang using several types of musical instruments in their hands, 
If you read Math 28 verse 2 to 4, you will see that even those who went to the tomb to look at Jesus they met angels in the sepulchre. Now there is no point of arguments here, let me finish with the conversation, we will learn what the Lord will want us to learn, then I interrupted Satan, and I said, what kind of songs were singing the angels, he said, they sang three different songs, but the first song said, lift up the head, eternal doors, let the king of glory make his entrance, the one who redeemed the world with his blood, he must take the kingdom. The song was sung in the Yoruba language because we were talking in Yoruba language, Satan said, as we saw them singing, we were angry, and we told them, if you God's angels you venture to come here we will fight to the end, when we said that, they started another song, which says, today is a great day, honor be paid to the king of cherubim, all creatures you all come out of your hiding place, honor be paid to the king of cherubim, now great zeal on the war front. Honor be paid to the king of cherubim, demonic spirit tremble now, honor be returned to the king of cherubim, witches and wizards must not see us, honor be returned to the king of cherubim so on, Satan goes further in saying, when he god angels sang this song they were all ready to fight any power that was contrary to their power, while the forces of darkness stood, suddenly they noticed that angels of god used their instruments no more, and they stopped singing. There was a flat calm everywhere, and when it was about 23 past 58 they started singing a third song without their instruments, that said, the world and all that is in it belong to the Lord, the earth and all who live on it. The song they were singing was Psalm 24, all the demons around the sepulchre, all the forces of darkness including Satan himself became helpless, and more or less dead, immediately one of the God angels came to them he put his hand on their head. He put his hand on the heads of all forces of darkness as many as they were, in fact he forced them to lower their head by force, he then said, and when Satan and his angel lifted the head what they saw was surprising. There was a big pandemonium, Satan and his group were mad, immediately they heard God angels still singing their last song for the Christ was resurrected, the song go as follow, hallelujah, now the conflict and the battle is over. This is the triumph of our Saviour, all the angels sing for the righteous man was raised from the dead, his resurrection has been a great sorrow for the kingdom of darkness, because he gave his people the Christians freedom and authority over the forces of Satan, Satan says, it is from that moment that God the Father has put authority that no one can face in the name of this righteous man, for God has supremely raised him, and given him the name which is above all names so that in the name of Jesus every knee will bow in heaven, on earth and under the earth, how good is the name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah glory, so I asked another question to Satan, what is the difference between you and that righteous man, and why do you call him just, so Satan replied, the difference is that he is the creator, everything he says he will do, he will surely do it, his word will never change, and then I asked another question, between his disciple and your followers who will benefit from better things, and Satan said, why are you asking for such a thing? I told him, I just want to know that's why I ask, then Satan told me something very funny, he said, beware if someone is crying that does not mean he cannot see, I said, I do not know what you mean, he says, but know that whoever does the will of the righteous man on earth will enjoy small improvements, really small, and sometimes he will have nothing at all, such a person will experience poverty, divers tribulations and problems in his life, but in the government and kingdom of this righteous man he will be with him forever, but whoever does our will in this world, we will give him everything he wants, whether it's money, celebrity or anything, he will be rich like wealth itself, he will suffer nothing in this world, he will even have more than the necessary. Finally me and that person will travel to my kingdom where I will make this person an ambassador, then my friend, you have heard this dialogue between Satan and me, Jesus Christ is the Lord, even Satan knows it, have you received Jesus as the Lord and King of your life, accept him now, as you are tomorrow may be too late, today is the day of your salvation, you know many people believe to come into contact with spirit and find a favor. I am sure that you will soon go forever, the favors you seek will be of no use, you can laugh now, but I'm sure a preacher will certainly preach you someday, 
and you will not have any laugh, do you know who is this preacher? This gentleman is death, death is the greatest preacher that ever existed on earth, everywhere he preach his message people always shed tears, you see people dying every day, where do you believe they are going? Where do you think they are going, so the decision is in your hands, if you are a Christian it's time to start doing business with God to stop playing, stop playing games.